what do we do with a patient who's very thin but who is interested in having a tissue reconstruction or what we say an autologous uh, reconstruction. The first thing I want to say is many patients who feel that they are too thin for the most common form of tissue reconstruction here at PRMA, which is the DIEP flap, or we say deep flap for, for convenience. Many patients who think they're too thin are not too thin. Sometimes the ideal candidate is a thin patient. Um, generally, a thinner patient may have a, a smaller breast size, maybe an A to B cup. Uh, so I want to get that out of the way first. Don't, don't think you're not a candidate because you're a thin person or because somebody in your, your area, the general surgeon or the oncologist has said you're too thin. Let us be the judge of that. Now then, if we at PRMA, if, if I think you're too thin, there are other tissue options. So the second tier of tissue options now come from the thigh. So the inner thigh, which includes the VUG flap, the vertical upper gracilis, or the tug flap, the T stands for transverse, from the upper outer thigh, the ALT flap, and the back of the upper thigh, the PAP or PAP flap. So these are all alternatives to the DIEP flap taking tissue from the thigh. And these can be really good options in a, in a thinner patient. Then there are tissue options from the back of the trunk, the buttock area. So the more upper buttock area is the SGAP or GAP or S-GAP uh, flap, which takes tissue from kind of the upper gluteal area. And then there's the companion flap, which is the lower gluteal area called the I-GAP or inferior gluteal artery perforator flap. And, and finally, uh, there is a flap that's kind of a hybrid from the upper outer thigh and lower part of the outer trunk called the LTP flap. So that's taking tissue from kind of what we would call the saddlebag area. So there are lots of thigh and trunk flaps that we can go to. And then there's a kind of tried and true traditional flap the latissimus dorsi flap, which takes tissue from that upper back area. And the pros and cons of the latissimus flap, it's readily available, uh, it's a very reliable flap. Um, sometimes I'm reluctant to use it in, a, in an active patient, perhaps a younger patient, because you are taking uh, some or all of the latissimus muscle, which is a, a functioning muscle. There are ways to take tissue from that area without the muscle um, and take it as a perforator flap with no muscle, just as we do with the DIEP flap. Uh, so that represents another set of choices from that upper trunk area. So in summary, lots of options besides the DIEP flap. We call these the alternative flap. They're usually not our first choice, but in the day-to-day uh, -day goings on of the practice, at some point, somebody's always doing one of these alternative flaps because we have patients from all over the country, many of whom are not good candidates for the DIEP flap, and they're coming here for these alternative flaps. So rest assured, we have other tissue options for you.